Hello, God bless you. My name is Stephen. I'm the pastor of Graffiti Fellowship Church in Brooklyn, New York. And it's time for today's daily devotion. This is where we take a chapter from the Bible, read it together each day. And uh, we're going through the Gospel of Luke in this series. And today we're reading Luke chapter 4. Uh, so far in the Gospel of Luke, we've seen the prophesied birth of John the Baptist, who himself fulfills a prophecy that uh, one would come announcing that the Messiah was near. Uh, we see the prophesied birth of Jesus. We see uh, both children born. We see them come to adulthood and begin their respective public ministries. John baptizing and saying Messiah is coming soon. Jesus then coming to John for baptism. Uh, at the end of chapter 3, the latter half of chapter 3, there's a lengthy genealogy that establishes the family line of Jesus from his earthly father Joseph all the way back to Adam in the garden, uh, which is uh, very important to establish. Also very unique reading. And uh, today in chapter 4, uh, chapter 4 is 44 verses. So kind of the longer side of average. And uh, we're going to see uh, Jesus go. He's just been baptized. And then we see him now in the wilderness under just direct temptation uh, from the enemy. And uh, we see the earthly ministry of Jesus begin to unfold in earnest. So let's read Luke chapter 4. It begins, Then Jesus, immediately after his baptism, then Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan River, and he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where he was tempted by the devil for 40 days. Jesus ate nothing all that time and became very hungry. And then the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become a loaf of bread. But Jesus told him, no, the scriptures say people don't live by bread alone. And then the devil took him up and revealed to him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. I'll give you the glory of these kingdoms and authority over them, the devil said, because they are mine to give anyone I please. I'll give it all to you if you'll worship me. And Jesus replied, the scriptures say you must worship only the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem, the highest point of the temple, and said, If you're the Son of God, jump off. For the scriptures say he'll order his angels to protect and guard you. They'll hold you up with their hands so that you won't <clears throat> even hurt your foot on a stone. Jesus responded, The scriptures also say you must not test the Lord your God. When the devil had finished tempting Jesus, he left him until the next opportunity came. Then Jesus returned to Galilee, filled with the Holy Spirit's power, and reports about him began to spread quickly throughout the whole region. He taught regularly in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to the village of Nazareth, his boyhood home, he went as usual to the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read the scriptures. The scroll of Isaiah the prophet was handed him, and he unrolled the scroll and found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. He rolled up the scroll, handed it back to the attendant, and sat down. All eyes in the synagogue looked at him intently, and then he began to speak to them. The scripture you've just heard has been fulfilled this very day. Everyone spoke well of him and was, by, uh, was amazed by the gracious words that came from his lips. How can this be, they asked. Isn't this Joseph's son? And then he said, you will undoubtedly quote me this proverb, physician, heal yourself, meaning do miracles here in your hometown like those you did in Capernaum. But I tell you the truth, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. Certainly there were many needy widows in Israel in Elijah's time when the heavens were closed for three and a half years and a severe famine develop, uh, devastated the land. Yet Elijah was not sent to any of them. 
he was sent instead to a foreigner, a widow of Zarephath in the land of Sidon. And there were many lepers in Israel at the time of the prophet Elisha, but only one, the only one healed was Naaman, a Syrian. When they heard this, the people in the synagogue were furious. Jumping up, they mobbed him and forced him to the edge of the hill on which the town was built. They intended to push him over the cliff, but passed, he passed right through the crowd and went on his way. Verse 31, Jesus then went to Capernaum, a town in Galilee, and taught in the synagogue there every Sabbath. Every Sabbath day. There too the people were amazed at his teaching, for he spoke with authority. Once when he was in the synagogue, a man possessed by a demon, an evil spirit, began shouting at Jesus, Go away, why are you interfering with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus cut him short, Be quiet, come out of the man, he ordered, and at that the demon threw the man to the floor as the crowd watched. Then it came out of him without hurting him further. Amazed, the people exclaimed, what authority and power this man's words possess. Even evil spirits obey him and they flee at his command. The news about Jesus spread throughout every village in the entire region. After leaving the synagogue that day, Jesus went to Simon's home where he found Simon's mother-in-law very sick with a high fever. Please heal her, everyone begged. Standing at her bedside, he rebuked the fever and it left her. She got up at once and prepared prepared a meal for them. As the sun went down that evening, people throughout the village brought sick family members to Jesus, no matter what their diseases were. The touch of his hand healed everyone. Many were possessed by demons, and the demons came out at his command, shouting, You are the Son of God. But because they knew he was the Messiah, he rebuked them and refused to let them speak. Early the next morning, Jesus went out to an isolated place. The cloud, the Crowds searched everywhere for him, and when they finally found him, they begged him not to leave them. But he replied, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God in other towns too, because that is why I was sent. So he continued to travel around, preaching in synagogues throughout Judea. That's the end of Luke chapter 4. And so we see the earthly ministry of Jesus begin. Uh, word about Jesus is spreading. Uh, he's gathering fame and notoriety, not because he's seeking fame and notoriety, but because he carries the kingdom of God and everywhere he goes, uh, healing is brought, wholeness is brought, uh, grace is manifest, and he's leaving everyone and everything restored. Where there was brokenness, there's healing. And that word spreads. You can't keep that. Uh, you can't keep a lid on a story like that. And so the people are flocking to Jesus. Uh, so glad that you joined us for this chapter. And I hope you'll join us again next time as we read uh, the next chapter, Luke chapter 5. God bless.